Hello and welcome to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're taking a look at a new game on the channel. And it is a very new game. This is Laysara Summit Kingdom, which uh, launched into Steam Early Access a few days ago. Um, yeah, it's a city builder with a twist. The twist being that you have to build a city on a mountain, which obviously presents some uh, some challenges. It, uh, yeah, I don't know if I've left the message up at the beginning there, but it says, you know, it's kind of based on Himalayan culture. Um, but, you know, it's a work of fiction, so there's talking yaks, apparently, which I'm looking forward to experiencing. Um, yeah, I th I'm not sure exactly... Well, we could have a look at the Early Access Roadmap. Uh, here we go. So, where are we now? I suppose we're, we're, we're... It's the path to the top, isn't it? With 1.0 there. So, the, yeah, they're looking to build in some difficulty levels, some uh, lo language localizations, um, some new mechanics, new challenges and scenarios. Um, yeah. That's the main thing, a few visual upgrades near the top there, but to be honest, from what I've seen, this is a very pretty looking game. I mean, look at that. Uh, but yeah, let's dive in and see for ourselves. Um, I get, okay, so we've got campaign not currently available, that's fine. Uh, standard, choose from various mountains differing in shape and condition and play a standalone adventure, each with different sets of objectives. We have challenge, short and difficult scenarios, testing our optimization and management skills. And free build, so that's going to be more like a sandbox mode. But let's start with standard, and hopefully we'll get a little tutorial to teach us how to play the game. Um, Hope Spark Hill, here we go. That's our mountain. Uh, vegetation zones balanced, resource deposits copper. Available to import, we've got salt, dye, perfumes and gold. Available to export butter lamps, I've no idea what a butter lamp is. No rivers, uh, standard avalanches, okay. Avalanches, I, I mean, I guess, um, mountain setting. in the long and storied history of the kingdom of Lesara, this one surely has to be the worst. Following the harvest, a mysterious mist suddenly appeared all across the kingdom. Then, the pandemonium started. Crops started to fail. Disoriented animals barely produced any milk. People started to get sick. And you can't see anything. The fog in this valley is even worse than the city. For all we know, we could be lost already. Faith, my friend. Have faith. We're following the path that's been chosen for us. Path? I don't see any path. Just the same damn forest going on for days. It's not entirely the same. Look, there are more and more pines, and the thickets are thinning out. We are getting higher. We'll get to the uplands shortly. Even if that's true, what will we find there? Mark my words, mountains are no place for humans. <laughs> yes, but they are a place of the spirits. We will settle at the foot of the mountain and make our way up to build a grand altar at the very summit. The spirits surely will recognize our efforts and help us to drive the mist away. And Lysara will be saved. Yeah, that's great and all, but did you see how low on supplies we are? Never mind building a temple, we'll die of hunger before even reaching the top. Come on, it won't be that bad. Look on the bright side. Mountains are above the mist, so we'll be able to cultivate crops and pasture our yaks again. <laughs> mm -mm, maybe. Until the first avalanche sweeps us all away. Stop worrying about minor details. Minor details like avalanches. Sacred quest, <laughs> and nothing will stop us. Onwards. That's cute. It actually, uh, it's got more of a story element going on, on than I was expecting, actually, which is kind of cool. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Finally, a place above the mist and with enough space to establish a small colony. It'll serve us as an outpost when we move on to bigger mountains. So yeah, so I guess that, you know, the campaign will probably take place across a, a big mountain range, and I guess we move into different peaks. I guess it makes sense. We need to maintain contact with the capital in case they need to come and save us. Nonsense. We'll achieve great things in these mountains and this small settlement will be our first step. Let's start by building a district for the workers. Yeah, so here we go. We're going to do a bit of tutorialising, I think. Um, so, where's... And I can also hold... Oh, yeah. I can scan around. It's quite sensitive, so... Yeah. Uh, which I think I could change. Um, we'll scroll in. We can get pretty close. We can zoom out pretty far. 
Uh, mouse wheel to hold. Oh, okay, yeah. So you can hold down mouse wheel and you kind of get a bit of a bit of an overview of the place. Okay. Uh, pause on pause of space. Uh, game speed changes. Yeah, I'm sure that's fine. Let's build a food market. It'll be a central point for your settlement as it distributes food among citizens living nearby. Okay. Food market. Okay. Okay. Um, see the marker above the food market? Yes, let me right click there. Uh, it means the building doesn't have a road connection yet to the mountain entry point, which is here. Uh, let's build some roads to fix that, of course. And what's that demolish? Okay. That's the entry point. If it, yeah, so I've just clicked and then I just sort of... I'm not having to hold down, I just move the mouse to do a bit of that. I'm going to come in there. Uh, I've got to click again, but I'm going to sort of... Something like that. There we go. Every settlement needs workers. Building houses increases the town's population. We need 32 lowland... Oh, hey, look, might as well read it. Uh, let's place a few near the food market. After building a house, it becomes inhabited instantly by four citizens willing to take jobs. Workers are assigned to workplaces automatically. Okay, lowlanders. Okay, so we want... Uh, so this is like a residential thing. Let's start with Lowlanders Hut. So, four, we're going to need eight buildings then by the sound of it. Um, can I rotate? Try art, no, art, un unselects. That's, that's interesting, if they're like next to each other, they kind of, kind of merge a little bit. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, well, we could have like a little, maybe we'll have like a little row of four there, and we could have. Oh, I can't be. Oh, okay. Uh, can I rotate the map? Oh, I can, can't I? If I. Uh, how do I rotate the map again? I think it's taught me how to rotate. Uh, yeah, so they're lacking a road connection, so I do need just need to. Uh, right, so now we've got 30, 32? Yeah, it says 32. I've only got 24 there. Oh, it's because that's unemployed, uh, is the 24. Okay. The first, very first settlers on the mountain. That's great. We should take care of their basic needs, like shrines. They need to have spots where they can pray for the success of our mission. Hmm, I meant providing them with food. Well, we can do that too, I guess, but spirituality comes first. Okay. They look to cherish their spirituality in spots like the Praying Place. Uh, okay, so we have Enlightenment tab. Praying Place. Okay. So I guess we'll just... Oh, okay, we're not meeting that one. So let's just pop it on this kind of intersection here. There we go, and everyone's got access. So learn more about your folks' needs. Let's click on a hut. Okay, let's click on this one. Uh, here you can see both the already fulfilled needs, uh, which I guess is this. They don't have any food yet. Uh, oh yeah, unsatisfied needs. Sampa, they need, uh, provide this resource from a food market. We do, is that our food market? I think it is. And eggs, okay. Um, but that's just a distribution point, isn't it? So we need to set up production. Uh, how much, how, this bar shows how many and which category needs you need to fulfill to make your citizens willing to upgrade their home. Three categories, food, prosperity, and enlightenment. Okay. Destroy house. No, I think we're okay. What do I do? How do I close this? Just right click. There we go. Build a chicken farm and production of eggs will start. Make sure the chicken farm has the food market in its range, okay? Oh, oh yes, okay. I see a little sub, sub menu here. Uh, okay, so. It's saying the range is quite far, but I'm not... Hang on, if I deselect that, does this have a visible range? Kind of. I think if I was to build a road out first, it would kind of indicate a bit of a range. If I click, yeah, so that's all in range now. I see that. So um, that could be a little clearer, I think. Okay, so now it's saying, yeah, it's in range. It's got a road. It's all good. Um... Stick, stick it in there. 
Chicken farm is now producing eggs, but as indicated by the icon, it's not sending them anywhere. The transport produced resources hold left mouse button over the chicken farm and point to the market. Okay. Okay, now yeah, we made a little route, good. Now they've got eggs. Uh, let's increase food variety and provide them with Sampa, a flour made from barley. Use a mill to turn barley from barley fields to Sampa and can be distributed through the market. Well, this could be a good place for stuff. Um, production per mountain zone. Yeah, so I think this is good. Um, how many should I do? Um, I might do a few. Oh, I can't build there. I build there. Okay, so let's um, then get a little road. It's coming out to here. Looks good. Uh, we need a mill. I would like to know how I can rotate uh, buildings, because I, I just got like that to kind of lie flat against this road a little bit. Um, hang on. If I go into the menu... Key bindings. What have we got? R rotate cameras E and Q. Actually, I tried doing that. It wasn't doing anything. Uh... Yeah, I'm not seeing anything for rotate building, interestingly. Okay, maybe that's coming in the early access. It would be nice. I like to, I like, I like to rotate buildings. Um, I guess I'll put that there because it kind of fits against the road then. Let's just uh, put all this stuff going to the mill. And then the mill... Target building is... Oh. Okay. Uh, we can try moving the building then. That's better, is it? I think you could show the uh, the ranges a bit. Uh, there's a bit more visual clue as to the... Uh, the extent of the range for this building would be nice. Obviously, when you've built a road, you can see it, but... I'd kind of like to know where I should build my roads, um, but okay. Um, they're ready to upgrade their housing. Uh, yep, so let's just do all that. There we go, little nascent colony. Splendor looks like the lowlanders are happy here. They will become a backbone of the settlement's economy. Yeah, but artisans won't be satisfied so easily. They're used to a certain standard, you know. If we want to progress, we'll need them for their manufacturing skills. I'm sure we can somehow make them comfortable too. I wonder if we're going to have to make a way to, get, to sort of get across. Look, this seems the perfect place for an artisan district, if you ask me. Well, we can try, I guess. Okay. So, oh, here we go. We're going to have to connect a bridge. Okay. Uh, connect two green regions via a bridge. So we'll do this, and uh, we just, what do I do, do I click and, oh okay, I see. Let's do that, and we should probably make a little road from here to here, How about that. Artisans, after lowlanders, are another social caste. They're helpful with running more advanced buildings. Um, build artisans district in the newly reached region. Have 40 artisans living within range of a food market. So we're going to have to put the food market down first, and it probably makes sense to have that reasonably central. Um, we're going to have to have... Well, I don't know how many artisans you get in a hut, but let's, uh, let's just pop that down. Um, you get... You still get four. That's good. What I might do, I might just have a, a road going all around the food market. Now we're going to need 10 houses. Again, if it kind of showed me the range and then I just want a bit more of a visual clue about it. I mean, I, you know, I can kind of intuit it from what I've already done, but I'd kind of like a, like an overlay or something, just kind of showing the range. That would be good. Uh, I'll do the roads first, so, so we'll do that and then maybe off the bridge. sort of radiate some stuff off from there. So, uh, artisan houses, is that going to, yeah, okay, so it's showing me, it goes pretty far, actually. Well, let's do a couple there. I would really love to rotate. Um, there. Okay. 
It doesn't work when you kind of have it like that. My rotation's not working either. Uh, camera, I mean. Uh, just for symmetry, I'm going to put two more there. <laughs> okay, um, good. Let's fulfill some needs. Fill the progress bar to halfway in ten artisan houses. Okay, so they need... They need food. Uh, Sampa and eggs. Okay. So do we double it up, or is there a way to distribute... Can I link... Ah, okay. There's no drag, drag and drop between the food markets. So I think we just got to double up them. So, well, we should probably have a shrine as well. Maybe a couple. I put one there and one there. That's kind of those two are kind of hitting everyone. Uh, eggs. Okay, that's saying that's within range, so that makes sense. And there's the this. This doesn't really need to be in range of anything except itself. Um, what I might do is just have some fields here. Do that. And we need a mill, obviously. And if I pop the mill, say, uh, there, that's within range. So, do, 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 do. There we go. Uh, mountains are rich in natural resources. We can extract them using mines. Build a copper mine. Okay. Uh, okay, so you just click on the resource and say build mine. Oh, look at that mine. Interesting. I don't know why my map rotation's not working. It says it should be on E and Q. But again, this is an early access title. Oh, what happened there? Build mine, and then I need to... Oh. Okay. I kind of get it, but... Why can I not? Hmm. Maybe we should take the road up a little bit. Oh, I can't easily. My mill's in the way. Tell you what, if we um, if we move this mill to the other side of the road, should be should, maybe that works. Ah, there we go. Okay. So he looks like he needs cows. Uh, besides human workforce, some buildings also require yaks to operate. Build a yak pasture to increase the town's yak population, uh, which is here. Okay. Yak pasture. Where should we put that? Over here near the chickens, maybe, or near the mill, perhaps? Uh, with copper extraction up and running, we can use it to make utensils in the coppersmith workshop. Uh, highly desired goods uh, are distributed to nearby houses from commodity suppliers. Okay. Uh, note that the coppersmith and commodity suppliers are run by artisans. Okay. Have commodity supply with 40 artisans in range. Well, we could probably manage that here. Start distributing utensils. Okay. Uh, right. So, he needs 40 in range. don't really... Aesthetically, that doesn't please me, but... <laughs> I, I, mm. Well, I can extend the road, and that'll make it look a bit better, I think. Okay, so let's do that. We'll kind of get, like, a little, little thing going there. So what's this? This is saying go there, I suppose. Can't distribute half-finished product. Copper has to be processed into another resource. Okay, well... Um, what was this telling me? Oh, what's this? Copper utensil production. Uh, coppersmith. I see, I see. Okay, well, let's pop the coppersmith, like, uh, here, maybe. Um, he needs yaks as well, does he? Um, okay, we could build another, we could build another yak pasture. Uh, yeah, we should have enough now. Um, that to there. And that to there. And that. That, that. What was that saying? Resource income consumption. Okay. It seems that there aren't enough utensils for everyone. However, a coppersmith only uses one unit of copper. That means a single mine can supply multiple workshops. 
Okay, you can use a carrier post to divide the resource flow to multiple buildings. You may need to cancel existing resource flows to do this. Okay. Ah, uh, what have we got here? Distribution. And send resources to multiple target buildings in range. Uh, so we can... Ah, I want to kind of cancel the receiving part of this, don't I? Yeah, so that's... Hmm. Okay, let's see how this works. Uh, oh, if he... Kind of... Hmm... I might put another coppersmith here if I can. Uh. Uh. One in there. Okay, so let's link this to this. And this supplies both of those. And both of these supply stuff to there. There we go. Cool. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's expand higher. The climate in the middle zones of the mountains is just perfect for bees and producing honey. Sounds nice. Uh, have an operational shaft going up. Okay, so we've got a um, shaft here. What is going on? What is that suggesting? Ah, okay. Uh, well, this seems like a good spot. End of our little road that we've already made. And uh, let's come up there. Ooh, look at that. The beekeeper is one of the buildings whose productivity depends on the mountain zone you place it in. Uh, so actually the this sort of yellow zone is actually perfect for the bees, like she said. And were we to go higher, well, that still looks like a, a yellow zone actually, but uh, this seems pretty good. I have two operational beekeepers in the middle zone. Alright, food. Honey production. Beekeeper. Why don't we have one sort of here, and then we'll pop another one over here. And we're going to need a road. There we go. Your brilliant plan seems to have a flaw. Flaw is a perfect place for bees. You act like you got stung by one. Oh, open your eyes. How are we going to transport all this honey down? Relax. With the right attitude and an open mind, we can overcome any obstacle. How exactly would an open mind help us to transport anything? Oh, just you wait. Let's get my fellow monks here and they'll come up with a solution. Uh, oh, ooh, okay. So we should put in a uh, monk's dormitory. Rumor has it monks sleep hanging upside down like bats. But no one has been able to verify this yet. Okay. Um, oh, my next thing is to do an academy. Uh, but I'm going to build... Um, not exactly sure how many to do. Let's put a couple in. Um, you can re increase research level of your town to gain access to more advanced buildings. This is done by scholarship facilities such as the Academy. However, it will grant research only when staffed, so we also need monk dormitories. Well, I put these here now, so I guess we'll have to put our university up here. <laughs> uh, oh, you need a lot of monks. Uh, satisfied? Yeah. I, 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 mm. I probably shouldn't have put the Academy up here, but we're going to roll with it. did leave a space here, so I'm going to put a road there. The road's around it as well. Oop. So, if they need... Uh, tea. I feel like maybe I should have built my academy down. Let's, let's, let's move it. I think, I think perhaps I've I made a boo-boo. Right. Let's move the academy down here instead. Give me quite a nice view. Might need to be... Uh, I don't know. But again, I'd like to be able to rotate it. Just thinking about where I can get the monk dormitories in. They probably need to be quite close to the food market. What I could do then is maybe move my chickens. We... Oh, so I'd like to be able to rotate them. Move the chickens up there.
I thought the monks were going to do something up there with the bees, but no, I think it's just to open up the research stuff. Um, I'll put that there for now. I'm going to delete this bit of path. Oop, not that bit. Need that bit. Uh, in, well, we're built too, so I might as well move these monk dormitories down. Um, hmm, okay. Uh, is it here? Yeah, it's here. do I need? Missing workers, monks. What do I need? Okay. Uh. Honey. See, that's what you're kind of here to do, isn't it? Missing workers, monks. Why? Why don't I have monks? Uh. Oh, I built a couple more houses and this went down. I think maybe I just didn't have enough houses. Uh, okay, so that's, that's, oh, no, that's not, that's a yak field. We don't need yaks working at the university. That'd be crazy. Um, I really wish you could rotate these. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I'm, struggling a little bit because of the access to the food market. I might move these houses at this point. Put one there. Um, and put another one there. This guy doesn't have access to certain things on the food market. That chicken's still in the way. Uh, tell you what, let's move the chicken coop there. And I can have a little row of monk houses here. I only need one more house, but I'll We're gonna move you, move you. Um, okay, why if I, I don't know. Can upgrade some of these. What we, what did you have that the others don't? Unsatisfied needs, praying place. Oh, okay, well that's easily sorted. Uh, I think what we'll do, we'll have one here, and we'll have one here. You're sorted. What have you got going on now? Uh, utensils, okay. Supply not meeting demand. Uh, so we could have maybe a... Where can I see... Okay, producing four of four. Producing five of five, producing five of five. Uh, surplus plus two, so we could maybe have, uh, we could have another coppersmith then, couldn't we? Um, where should we have it? Hmm. It's almost like it's a lack of space when you build on top of a mountain. <laughs> uh, this... I mean, it's not... it's not pretty. Uh, I guess it could work. Um, so you... can we tie another one at... not in... oh, not in range. Okay, well that makes sense. Um, hmm. I just have to build a road around there. <laughs> I think rather than I, I think a lot of this game is about Ooh, okay, what am I what am I mucking up here? Um kind of finessing and optimizing things like supply chains and so on. Um 
which is uh, which, which is fine. It's just um, people. I've read it on the Steam reviews anyway. People sort of expect because it's got basically really glowing reviews, but there are some people sort of saying, "Oh, they wanted it to be more of a sort of construction simulator sort of thing." So you know, you pop a building down, and little workers go over to to work on stuff and slowly build it. Um, but that's not really how it works. What do you mean not in range? Is it because of the roads, maybe? Oh, God. Okay, well, what? Okay. Let's move you. I'm going to move you along a bit. Why can't you go there? We might have to do it in two stages. It, well, oh, it might be because of the uh, the supply chains, actually. Let's just uh, turn these off for a sec. Nope. Why can't I move you? like for my um, my rotation to be working. I don't know why it's not. I don't think I can build a decent road around here, but maybe just that will be enough. <laughs> it's very inelegant. Uh, but this is this is kind of how we're doing it. Um, right, so can he... Okay, so they can get out now and they can all feed into here. Uh, supply of something too low. Is it... Ooh. Eggs not oh, okay, so we need another we need another chicken farm. Okay, we've got a little space here maybe. Um, it's very much growing organically at the moment. <laughs> I would say. Um, but hopefully that's fine, because we're just learning the game. Alright, we're gonna put one there. Now we're short of lowlanders. Okay, so it's it's very much like um I mean, I didn't play it all the way to completion of a campaign, but it's very much like um, Anno so far, it seems. Uh, which is obviously fine. Oh, no. <laughs> oh dear, and what, what are they running out of now? Uh, is it because of the eggs? Do they need more eggs? What would... Okay. Everything's good. Everything has a knock-on effect. And they're gonna, we're going to need more. We're going to need another lowlanders hut. Okay. So. How about that? Okay. So this supply too low. That's a. Hey, oh, eggs. I haven't supplied to the market. So we should be good. We should be good. In fact, let's upgrade the rest of the monks to. A. Hey, I think we're good. Got loads of monks now. All right, continue. At research level one, you gain access to the cart post. Uh, it works like a carrier post, but isn't restricted by range. Therefore, it's perfect for long range, uh, long distance transportation. Use it to send honey down to your artisans and finally upgrade their houses. Okay, um, so carts are not designed to transport teenage humans or teenage yaks for that matter, no matter how long they've been at the inn. Um, can send resources to multiple target buildings over long distance. So uh, do we put that at the top? Um, hang on, let's, um, let's get rid of all these roads I built for the, uh, academy. Okay. So, if we pop that here, and link these buildings to this, and then link this to this, yay! There we go. Right, well, let's upgrade some artisan houses then. Alright. I have no money. Uh, maybe money will start coming in now everyone's upgraded. <laughs> Nicely done. We've done some decent groundwork here. 
an absolute mess. We're now ready to continue with our quest and travel to the first real mountain, high enough for a summit temple. Not so fast. We still need a logistics point down here, and more importantly, a way to secure our financial situation. Exactly, we're out of cash. Oh, come on. Do we really need to deal with such trivial matters? We've got bigger things to pursue. Trivial? This whole endeavour is an insanely complex logistical operation, which could end in disaster in the blink of an eye. We have to make sure the treasury checks out, or that's the end of us. Okay, um, build donation spots to collect money from nearby citizens. Okay. Oh, it's big. Alright, that is hitting all my, uh, all my residents though, in fact if I... I pop it there and just build the uh, road out a little bit. I guess that we can do different types of road. Well, we can only do one at the moment. There we go. So we're getting... Ah, we got some money in. Sweet. And we'll do the same over here. Yeah. And does it work on the monks as well? So does this one cover the monks? Uh, it covers some of them. I think that's probably alright for now. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. This will be a good spot for a trading post. It'll be easy to send resources further from here. Ah, huh, what's that noise? <gasps> Avalanche! Yikes. Alright, forget about it. We're all gonna die. Relax, no one got hurt. Actually, this avalanche wasn't even that huge. I bet we could still have a trading post in this region. You want to stop all this snow with the sheer power of your mind? Go ahead, I'll stay here and watch. Pretty stupid, we just need a few foresters to provide tree cover. That should do the trick. Ah, okay, cool. Basic way of blocking avalanches is to put trees in the way. We can do that using foresters. Uh, don't require road connection. Uh, to block more powerful av avalanches later on, you'll need multiple rows of foresters and or other specialised buildings. Okay, so what have we got? We've got avalanche protection, distribution, bridge. It wants me to do all of these things. Uh, oh, well that's probably for the bridge, right? Um, if we do that to here... Ooh, that makes your tummy go funny when you walk across that. Um, but that's good. Uh, distribution, trading post. Um, well, let's work on the avalanche protection for now. Global power of avalanches. Um, it's got an avalanche cover visualization. This filter shows you which parts of your town are protected from avalanche. Uh, okay. Have I got an overlay here? Oh, did I build the bridge in a stupid place? Maybe. Anyway. Workers. Is that just numbers of? Probably. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll just increase the number of dwellings down here. Seems to work okay. I might have uh, I might have another little pub road coming up here as we're sort of expanding the residential area a bit. Right. Not that it did an awful lot. <laughs> anyway, that's an, that's good enough. Okay. Why are these not expanding? Unsatisfied honey. We're not producing enough honey at the moment. Okay. Uh, well, that's probably easily solved. Um, honey producer here. Look. Are these guys happy now? No. Oh, utensils. Prayer spot could be the one. Another little one down, like here. That's good. And I'll just build a little road up there. Should hit that one. There we go. Good. Got loads of workers now. Uh, have operational trading post fully protected from avalanches. So we got our little bridge for what well, that's worth. Um, distribution trading post. I guess we'll pop that. They're like here. And we'll make a couple of roads. We'll do it from this bridge. Uh, and then 
want to have one coming from this bridge as well. Needs more yaks. How many yaks do we need? Do we need two yaks? What's this? Uh, so that's saying that's protected from weak avalanches. Okay. I don't, know what, I don't know what that thing means. Goods not being transported anyway. Probably because of the lack of yaks. Can we put yaks up here? Uh, we'd get five yaks on this kind of level. I mean, that's alright, isn't it? Here it comes. Hooray, it worked. The trading post is safe. I told you from the very beginning there is nothing to worry about. Now we're finally ready to move on. Let's make our way to the first real mountain. Can't wait. <laughs> okay, so tutorial level done. And now we've got, ooh, as a few, we have Wind Slab, Mount Plenty, Demon's Rest, Splintered Soul, Smother Flame, and Talon Top. Now, a couple of these have um, little icons that the others don't. I'm not quite sure what that means. If we click on one. Ah, good for a start. Very limited space with not much fertile ground for farming. Requires careful planning. What does that mean? Good for a start. Good sized mountain with everything you'll need. Or is something like Wind Slab. Contains rocky features, making dealing with avalanches a real challenge. Okay, so these are going to be slightly harder ones. This one uh, may be a bit more balanced. Very dry environment. Um, huge mountain with a lot of space and resources. If you want to go big with your town, this is the place. Oh. Well, I think what we'll do is I'd like to play a, a proper map, like a sort of game opening up to my own uh, actions. <laughs> what I might do is maybe we'll choose one now. Uh, probably not Wind Slab. Um, Why don't we try Demon's Rest? Very limited space with not much fertile ground for farming. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe Mount Plenty's the one to do, because everything is here. Got all the resources and stuff, some rivers, standard avalanches. Um, good sized mountain with everything. Else. Oh, maybe we'll do Talon Top. Yeah. Okay, let's do Talon Top. And, um... Hmm. Okay, we've got some difficulty modes here. A really forgiving experience, a balanced experience, challenging... Oh, well, I'm going to do a balanced experience, I think, but you can go pretty much onto a harder difficulty, should you show, should you show wish. Um, I'm just going to get it started here, and then you can probably tell from what I was intimating a moment ago. Uh, we might uh, leave it for a second episode. Ha! This is some serious mountain we've got here. It's not a home yet, but surely we have all we need to establish a settlement. I don't know, there's not much land suitable for efficient farming. Oh, come on, it's not like barley won't grow a little higher. Have some faith. Can't say I'm... S can't believe I'm saying this, but it doesn't look like the worst place possible. Okay, we'll have a... Oh, look at all these resource deposits. Hopefully we can run up some decent manufacturing operations here. You know what, you're right. With a positive attitude, we can definitely make it work. Okay, so let's just take a quick look where we find ourselves. So there's quite a lot of fertile ground here. Looks quite good. Quite a lot of stuff higher up. We've got some rock crystal and some probably copper. And then we go even higher up and we've got gold on quite uh, rocky ground. And I'm, in terms of avalanches, I reckon we're going to have avalanches there. We're going to have avalanches here. And it goes all the way around. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Probably, yeah. It even says if you hover over it, it's going to be avalanches there. So this looks pretty intriguing. Um, probably for the starting point, I'll probably... I want to start somewhere that's immediately under an avalanche. I might start here. That looks like it's got some nice broad space. Um, yeah, but what we'll do, I'll end it here for this episode, and we'll come back next time and, um, you know, have a bit more uh, to our own devices uh, growing and expanding a settlement, hopefully making it look a little more pretty than my, than my last attempt. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for watching this first episode of Lesara. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, uh, please hit the thumbs up button. Uh, I'm going to put a, uh, a link to the, the Steam Store page in the description, so please check that out if it's something you find that you're interested in. Um, thanks as well to the developers for sending me a review copy, the review key of the Early Access build to play around with. I'm very, very uh, pleased to be doing so, so thank you. And um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Is it something you would play? Is it something you might watch more of on the channel? Let me know. Because it's Early Access, I don't tend to do long series on Early Access titles. I prefer to sort of have a quick look and then sort of come back either when there's been a 
a, a transformative update or, or especially uh, on a 1.0 release because I, I, mainly for me I don't like to play a lot of early access um, because it, I find it kind of spoils it for me for like the full launch um, but certainly I'm certainly very interested to go in and, and take a look and see what games are like uh, at an early stage but let me know in the comments is it something you'd like to see me play on the channel let me know and you know if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed it'd be amazing if you could so with all that said thanks very much and I hope to see you next time bye for now <laughs>